Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shoot it to the right, shoot it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, what a horse, I know they're talking about me, of course. And I'm going to be in that winner circle someday. Yeah, I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker A high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker I'm gonna be in that winter circle someday Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of Water Horse I have the old goat himself, <laughs> yes. Jerry Harris. I'm filling in for Mike Inman, who's going to be here next week. Yes, I hear you. <laughs> We're just, we, we got something special for everybody today is the only reason that I'm doing this, because we got to get it all together in order for people coming in for the fast show. Yes, that'll work. So, uh, but I think sometimes you do that just because you think, you know, trying to help me stay on my toes. Well, but you own your toes. But, but you're supposed to already took us to a commercial. You ain't done that yet. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back after these messages. Hi, it's your friend Abby at Jim Armstrong Super. Just wanted you to know KBB voted Super best overall and most trusted brand once again. ACSI also named Super number one in vehicle safety. And J.D. Power is also named Super number one in brand loyalty. Last but not least, they're number one in my book, too. So come see me and your other friends at Jim Armstrong Super and see what being number one is all about. A call to Spencer Benedict Stables in Murfreesboro. 270-590-5285 or 270-590-5235 will provide the first step in breeding to one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, world grand champion Mr. True Blue, a consistent blue ribbon winner with a stud fee of $1,000, or select amateur show pleasure world grand champion El Zaro Star, a constant winner in both open and amateur competition and has a multi-mare discount with a stud fee of $750. Both of these World Grand Champion Stallions provide championship bloodlines with live full guarantees. Take that first step in adding another World Grand Champion in the walking horse industry. Make the call and make your selection. <laughs> Welcome back to this edition of Water Horse. Like I say, I have Mr. Jerry Harris here. This is my co-host. <laughs> I got some. I got some. Uh, some good news. The fast showcase starts the 28th through the 30th. Call Margo Urad 214-763-7379. Each night's going to start at six o'clock. Dean Baird, Renee Carlton, and Jamie Lawrence will mark the cards. Then we've got Walking in the Smokies on the 4th through the 6th in Smoky Mountain Arena in Sevierville, Tennessee. You can call Lexi Helton at 828-550-8520. Start time each night is 545. Judges, Jamie Bradshaw, Stephen Hankins, and Amy Trimble. Then you've got the Okoe Spring Fling. I talked to this gentleman, Bill Daltrey, during the trainer show. They're looking forward to having a real good time yes. up there. That's April 19th and the 20th in Cleveland, Tennessee. Start time is 6 p.m. Judges, Chad Adams, Keith Blackburn, and Claire Hankins. Later in April, we're going to have the Rack and Horse Celebration and then the Extravaganza, which there'll be more information on that later. But uh, a lot of people are talking about the Fast Show this week and what happened during the trainer show, but... Jerry, I, I'm going to tell you, our trainers, to me, stood up. They showed their horses. They believed in their horses. Uh, there was a lot of good video come out of that that 
makes it very questionable on what the USDA is doing. Uh, you you can't you can't just arbitrarily change the HPA to suit your agenda. Yes, and and that's what they do. They they change it to suit their agenda. They try to redefine what a scar is. We've known for years they were doing that. So uh, I'm just looking forward to the coming months as all this is laid out in a court of law and let people see just how over the board and how far out in the left field they have gone to prove something that is not true. You, you're right. And I recommend to anyone that's out there that's showing a horse, get your horse videoed when you take your horse through inspection. That's it. That's I mean, it. and it helps protect them, protect you, and everything else. So you might think is you know you might make somebody mad or you might step on somebody's toes, but hey, you are saving yourself and you are helping yourself. And that's data. The more the more proof we've got, the better off we are. I mean that that's just a fact. The more we can show where they're far overboard and where they can't show you a scar, they try to create the illusion that there is one, but when you can't see something. Believe me, it ain't there. You're right. You can't make it just appear because you want it. It's kind of like that three sales thick. Yeah. Nothing's there, so I'll just say, well, it's three sales thick. What do they know? Well, we know you're an idiot for saying it, but further and other than that, I don't know. All right, I believe we're going to go ahead and show some video, and we got a special breeding video today that yes. you, it's going to surprise a lot of people. But let's go in to watch a video from the Mississippi Horse Show. This was a pretty nice show right here. And you know, I hope we get a lot more people to, to support these shows, the new shows that's coming around and stuff like that. Miss Carol, that's a nice performance horse right there. Hey, she's got some good ones. She got Carol, some real nice horses. You're talking about a fine lady now. Carol is one fine lady. She loves to ride and she's a she's a excellent rider. Yes, yeah, she is. She can get it done. Yes. Park performance winner. I am a three-timer. She's a lady that I would love to sit here and do another interview. I know we've done some interviews with her, but she didn't been in this horse business for a long oh, time. Oh, she, there's a lot she knows. Yes. You know, it was suggested that I go get a lot of the old-timers together, and we've, we've got video that where we interview people for years that uh, later on in the off season, we're going to show that. All right, let's go to the trainer show victory passes, and we had a bunch of them. Yes, but they they, they had some good classes, buddy. Some good horses. And this one's one I I like that name, Bo Cephas. Yeah. Robin Nims. I mean, he's a guru of that the halter class, lead line. You know the. I believe it's between him. And uh, Laurie tunes on who is the yes. next Jeff Gibbons, because Jeff. Oh, now, he was. No, he, he, he was, was the master. He was the buddy. master on that. Right here's Mr. Far Real and Dahlia Smith Hard, your amateur canter winner. That's a real nice horse there. That horse right there. Paul did good with that yes. horse. Jimmy did good with that horse. You know, people say that these deals. You know, some people like them, some don't. Me, I love them. Joyce Myers then to get with that horse right I know. there. He showed him first. They, they can like him or not like him. The fact is, that's a good bloodline right there, buddy. That horse right there put three different riders, amateur riders, in the winner's circle. That's it. Not count the open. Then that, that's right. That's a nice horse right there. Nice, fluid. That's what the, what the walking horse is supposed to look like. Right here's the Char Queen, B.B. Beasley for Beth Beasley, your amateur four-year-old mare and gilding winner. I, you, <laughs> I thought this mare was real, hey. real top. I thought she was, made a real good show. I couldn't see anything in there giving her any competition, to tell you the truth. She B.B. Just, done a good job, I mean. She stood out. She did. Not that that wasn't a good class, cause it oh, was. Oh, that was good. But, that was a real good class. She she just stood out in the way she rode the horse and the way the horse was. 
And this is getting her ready to go in that amateur. You know, yeah. she's in the amateur clay with, with grown ups in there. Yeah. That's it. Right here, Kim Lewis. Now, right here is a lady. Yes. Bear Bill, your park performance amateur. Now, she was reserved in that class, but hey, that horse right there has been a stake horse. That's he's, right. He's done it all. We were just having a conversation the other day at a horse. I put a horse on park performance shoot, and they said, oh, you must don't think a lot. I said, no, you think Mayor Bill, he won <laughs> state classes and all, and they <laughs> dropped it down. <laughs> dropped and then he's down. still winning in the class. I mean, that's, that's a good horse. Hey, I like I like it because I'm no tail set. He's just out there walking. Yes. And he won an open and amateur competition. Yep. Right here, sideline. I tell you what, I, I appreciate Kendra Meyer. This horse made an excellent show, and Hannah's doing a super job she does with a super it. Super job. I but I really and truly wish more people would call me about advertising these flat shot horses because they are the walking horse. They're yes. their foundation. That's where it starts. It goes from there, from the trail, to the right here, to your performance horse. But this right here is an important, very important part of the Tennessee walking horse industry. And I'm gonna tell you, them trainers that train these, these flat shot horses like that, I mean, they are very talented horses. Hey, they, they horses. work hard. They work hard at it. Right there, Black Gen Scout and Megan Hammond. Tell you what, that young lady is a good rider. She's a real good rider. She's she's a top rider. And that, that's a top. And that's horse a good right horse there. right there. That horse is Super a real nice horse. horse. And I mean, he just he gets it done. Lady specialty winner. That's an excellent horse. I tell you what, she does a good job. She rode Epic for years. Yes. Right there, Zaro Jr. and Beth Beasley. This this horse was in that class. Yes. I'm gonna tell you, but it made a great show. But now again, Beth Beasley can flat ride a horse. Yes, she can. She knows how to get it done. Bell presented a horse real well. And that was another class that had a bunch of good horses in yes, it. Sir. You know, that's several good horses in it. But I believe that was one of the best and the biggest yeah. that was in there. Because that, that's a horse that's a lot bigger than you think he is. Right there's no doubt I am and Bob Adcock. It's another good horse that Bob have. I mean, you ain't gonna find Bob Adcock on one that ain't good. He can he can pick them out now. Yeah, he, he might not win every class, but I guarantee you he's gonna be in the running. Yes. Right there, I'm Charlie Black and Dale Smith Hard, pony winner. I like it, man. Yes. I'm Charlie Black. I'm watching a series called Broadway Empire. Uh huh. Ooh. Talk about some of them old guys, Al Capone, yeah. all that bunch, is it? <laughs> Yeah, he's a good rider. She's Excellent. A good trainer, too. He is. Right here, he's a lucky strike and Aubrey Derrickson with R.M. Kelly. That young lady, it would surprise to see her in, in, in the amateur ladies competition. Yes. Now, she's still the juvenile. <laughs> But she's an excellent rider. That is, that's a nice horse, too. Yes, it is. He's a lucky strike. RM is, is a good young trainer that's coming up in here in his industry. I mean, he yeah, does but a we're good not job. supposed to tell him that. Uh, 
They, they say he'll get the big head if we do. <laughs> <laughs> no, he always be pretty, pretty nice. Yeah, he he's always good. He is. He's, he's a good guy. Good. Yeah. Right here's the kingpin and Bob Adcock, your 15 to an understate. I thought this horse was a perfect. Me too. Son, he flat got it done. Had the head shake, the reach, the back end. Everything was perfect out there. That horse that walks good behind, uses his legs. Well, that white well. stocking shows you just how, yeah. how well he's walking in behind. Right here, I could talk all day about this horse yes. and the lady riding. Excellent horse. They brought that bought that horse last year during the celebration. Yes. Now right here is a lady that if she sees a horse and she likes him, she goes after him. And she can flat ride one too. Keep running, big boy. You can catch up with her in a minute. <laughs> the Paddock Master and Kenny Smith for Smith and Hart. You know, this is a class right here that I would love to see with several, several tra amateur trainers. Yeah. Amateur owned and trained horses in it because that's where it started. Oh, yeah. That's right. A lot right. of people don't realize it, but this is where it started with horses like this. And trainers like Kenny, someone that did their business work, had a business, did all this, but would go home and ride them horses and get them ready. I remember because, back in the days, they used to have a bunch of uh, two horse trailers. People yeah. have them, I'm trying to train horses to come to, and they train that horse they sell. Yeah. And they showed them at the horse show. Right here, ain't he grand? You know, we, I was talking to a gentleman the other day and he said, that little girl that you talk about on the show, said, every time you see her, she's riding a different horse. I said, her dad really puts her on some good horse. He said, but she can ride anything. I yes. said, just about it. I said, I told her daddy better not take her to a rodeo or he'd look up and she'd be out there on <laughs> one of them bulls. But she, she works at it. Yes, and she I, works and at I it. admire that in a kid, for them to work at what they love to do and really work at it. Right there, quite an honor, and Maxine Beasley. Tell you what, Maxine did well. Yes, he did. He really did. That's another nice horse that they have. We, we had this one, we put it up on YouTube and some, somehow they got flipped to where we would hit quite an honor to go to Switchblade. And then we couldn't find quite a hunter. And we, we don't know what happened, so we had to reload, render and everything, put them both back up there. These young ladies, Beth, Beth has done well with them. Yes making sure they learned how to ride and, and getting them interested in it. There's Switchblade and Allie Joe Jacobs. Allie Joe, I mean, it's, it's amazing how she can change herself from one horse to another horse. That's it. And ride, yeah. Well, she goes from flat shod, she goes into the, the equitation and she comes back into the performance. Yeah. She just, uh, what can you say? She she loves the horses. Yes, she loves the horse. Now she gets her work ethics. Her, her mother, I watched the video where her mother was making her do her laundry. Uh -huh. And buddy, she she made her do it. <laughs> <laughs> and right here is I'm big enough and Maxine Beasley. I tell you, that pony. A nice pony. Every time it goes in the ring, that's what you're gonna see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Flat walking and shaking. Just a super good pony.
Those girls got a lot of talent. They just oh, yeah. took their SATs, and uh, I bet you they did real well on them. Those, yeah. those two kids are smart. Oh, you see them, they're always reading a the book, they're always doing mm -hmm. stuff at the horse shows, yeah. And they love to bake. They make some outstanding cookies. Yes, they do. Real good Great cookies. Great cookies. Sometimes they'll give me two, and that, one for me and one for you, and I and think I eat, them I eat them both. I know, I, know. I told them, John, you did that. <laughs> Honored in Texas and Bob Adcock. Your amateur specialty. I told him, I said, Bob, that horse looked great. He called me, texted me back, and he said, you know, he said, he didn't feel like he looked. <laughs> he, he felt all right, but he looked good. Yeah. He did. I thought he made always, an excellent yeah. show. Bob just sets up there and lets them go, doesn't he? Yeah. That is the way to get it done. Boy, his family's been in the horse industry for mm -hmm. years. His his dad used to train. Yeah, he's. I mean, it was. I mean, Bob is. I'm gonna tell you, he's a he's a good horseman. All right. Well, your turn. Well, we'll be right back after these messages. <laughs> During the 2024 breeding season, you will find one of the top stallions in the walking horse industry, I Am Mighty Jose, standing at Precious Memories Farm in the heart of walking horse country. Call Daniel Miller at 931-703-5830 to schedule your mare. Breeding fee is $750, live full guarantee. Multi-mare discounts are available on request. I am Mighty Jose, a consistent winner in both open and amateur competition. So make that call today to start the process of raising a Tennessee Walking Horse champion. The Tennessee Walking Horse is rapidly becoming the horse of choice when selecting a great ride for the family. If you're looking for a smooth, easy ride on the trail that will take you through hills and streams or an obstacle course competition, the versatility of the Tennessee Walking Horse will stand out by showing its willingness to learn in its smooth, easy, steady gait through the course. If it's a competitive show horse you're looking for, the Tennessee Walking Horse is the perfect family horse by young and old, whether it's flat shot or padded performance classes for an amateur adult or youth, a walking horse is the horse of choice. The Tennessee Walking Horse is perfect for every equestrian division. Also remember one simple truth. If you ride one today, you'll own one tomorrow. That's a fact. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to this edition of Water Horse. Like I say, I have Mr. Jerry Harris right here with me, and he's the, the goat of this TV show. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> i tell you what, I, I've, I've done a lot of thinking about different things for people to see that they would appreciate, and we're, we're right in the middle of breeding season. Yes. So I got to look in at some of the people that I had talked to about breeding through the years, and uh, like Mr. Brantley, mm -hmm. we, I went over with him, and we went around to all the old barns over there, and a lot of them really run, some of them were even overgrown yes. with, with bushes and vines, but he would tell me what world grand champions come out of them barns, uh -huh. which very educational. And then, uh, at one time, we went down to uh, Franklin, Tennessee, to Harlinsdale, and I interviewed Mr. Bill Harlan, and we, we talked about the industry, where it was, where it was going, world grand champions, world champions, Pride of Midnight, and I think Pride of Midnight was the one that only showed seven times. Never won celebration but he was one of the biggest breeders. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I mean, his bloodline is next to none. Yes. But it was uh, it was just a, a, a great day that, you know, you spend with somebody like that with that kind of knowledge. I mean, it's a, 
I, I've done feeding videos with, with Joe Martin and, and Dick Peoples and people like that that have been in this industry yeah. for years. And the little bitty things that you learn from these people, it, it goes a long way. Oh, it does. I mean, it goes a long ways. You know, and back in them days when them people was coming up and breeding, I can th they can tell you what mare to breed to what stud horse and this and that. And I mean, it pretty much worked. Oh, I mean, they, they studied that thing. Well, Bill, he would talk about his horse, and he said that he loved the way his horse seemed to blow up when he'd get ready to go down to shoot into the celebration yes. arena. Said he'd just swell up, and he said like a swelling up with pride. It was, it was a great interview, and I want to share it with the people out there because it's breeding season. Think about this. This was one of the best breeders of all time. Oh yes. Mm -hmm. So if that video is ready, let's go to it right now. I'm here with Mr. Bill Harlan, and uh, Bill, I, I'm I'm just tickled to death to be down here. I I really appreciate you sharing your time with us. Well, we appreciate you coming. We're proud of what we're doing, what we've done, and glad to share it with other people. Well, I was noticing, I was talking to the cameraman on the down on the way down here. How many years has Harlandsdale Farm been a brood barn? We were identified with this place with a name in 1935. Uh, from 1930 to 1935, my father uh, acquired several parcels around a, a, a central farm here. And then uh, <clears throat> when the breeders started a registry and gave all our horses a name and a number, why well, then we decided we'd be identified with a place. <clears throat> and so he came up with the name Harlan's Dale Farm. Now, and I really can't give you the genesis of where he did, why he did that, and put that Dale on the end, but he'd been somewhere and seen a, a Dale on the end of a family name for a farm and thought that was appropriate. So we've been identified that way since 1935. And uh, Farmer in the Dale. Hmm? Farmer in the Dale. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey I, yeah, I'm discovering where I got my name now. But it, 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 the history in this building, though, is, is just phenomenal. I know from midnight sun on. In 1941, they built this building, uh, which is the central uh, part of the farm now, and gives us uh, an identity with this, this uh, building, <clears throat> which you can see off the highway. And uh, soon after they built the building here, why they really got bigger into the walking horse business. Prior to that time, we had some saddlebred horses here, which were <clears throat> the main component of Middle Tennessee horse shows. And the walking horse classes were a, a, all not an afterthought, but a, a, a little supplement to a saddlebred horse show. And we went along with that dual personality here until Midnight Sun came along. And he pretty much pushed the saddlebreds out of our place here. And he had such a dramatic impact on us and the walking horse industry around here that we have had a dual identity. We were Midnight Sun and we were Harvestdale Farm. And we went forward with that for a long time. And, uh, and the, midnight, the coming of Midnight Sun was, uh, it, we suddenly realized about 1946 hey, we had a piece of history in our hands here. Because he was so dominant in every way and so widely accepted. <clears throat> Up to that time, what I would say that the gate of the Tennessee walking horse was looking for an identity. It really was hard to say, well, they ought to be a little square, or a little more swingy, something. <clears throat> Midnight Sun put that big, bold, hard lick on. And from that point on, everything went was identified back to how it compared to Midnight Sun. And uh, we were blessed to be in that environment, which gave us a reason to stay in the business through thick and thin, hard times, good times, all that. So here we are today, uh, 35 to 05, and it's been a nice ride. Oh yeah, well I've, 
I know that when when people talk about Harlan's Dale, they, they always bring up Midnight Sun oh, because yeah. he is. But now when they talk about Harlan's Dale, they talk about another great stallion that I've, I've had the opportunity to see and I've, I literally love, and that's out on parole. Isn't he a nice horse? Oh, he's a fantastic he's horse. He's a great horse. And we're so proud to have him here. He's doing a great job for us. He was a very popular celebration winner. Uh, they take him back over there, as you've noticed, every year and and let pe different people ride him on the showgrounds. I mean, this is this is fantastic disposition. But before we got to him, we we went through. We've had the benefit of a lot of horses, which are now looked on as foundation stock. Going back to Sun's Delight, Pride of Midnight. But but no, but you know, I, I know what it is. There's so many of them that sometimes... Yeah, but it, Pride you, of Midnight was owned by this place. The, the, a lot of the others that stood here were, we were the agents for them. Right. And proud to have them. Manage their breeding programs. But Pride of Midnight was, was one of the last colts of Midnight Sun. Midnight Sun being one of the last crop of colts by Wilson Allen. And of course, you know, Wilson Allen had sired all the prior winners of the celebration except one up to the time of Midnight Sun. So he was the earlier dominant sire. Then, then uh, Midnight Sun became a dominant horse. And there were other good horses around because you can't have all one bloodline through your genetics and so th there were lots of others during that time but he was still the one we fell back on as the base for our breed uh, going forward. <clears throat> Prior to Midnight put another dimension in there. He was an athletic kind of horse with a big loose shoulder and could step up <clears throat> and put the gate on him which we treasure today. Either the way they're flat shod or, or built up, they've got uh, 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 show horse qualities that come through from the Pride of Midnight line that nothing else had put on them. And he had that basic walk and he was shown seven times, was tied first seven times, was never shown at celebration. There are lots of myths and stories about that, but they the fact is, he didn't show that. So you can't say he was a celebration winner. We don't know whether he would have been or not, but he was that kind of quality. And then he put out a line of colts that by the time they began to mature, he was the dominant sire of the breed at the time he died. In fact, there are some of my friends and, and some that are not so friends have said, it's a good thing he died because there wouldn't have been any other horse in the pedigrees from his point on. Mm -hmm. So we, we've been blessed here <clears throat> with having those two lines here. Midnight Sun being one of the last sons of Wilson Allen, Pride of Midnight being one of the last sons of, of Midnight Sun, and that blood flows through. And you can look at celebration records during the 1980s and the 90s. And you'll find prior to midnight, as I've forgotten how many of those celebration winners, six of them, I believe, five or six. And it, it, it got where you couldn't brag on them. You know, hell, everybody thought they, they're prides. <laughs> they're pride horses. <laughs> but there are, other, there are other good bloodlines that have surfaced, and so they complement each other going forward. So we keep getting. We've had the, the influence some would say negative, uh, more and more restrictions on your ability to show a Tennessee walking horse and the equipment you used and the condition of the horse. And we proudly say that Pride of Midnight saved the breed because he had the natural ability to step up and step under. Well, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken, that's what a lot of trainers, they, they couldn't believe that this horse could could do that. And and then once they found out he could, that, that that's when everybody was wanting to breed to him. Two of my good friends that are trainers in Shelville now have told, with me sitting in seats in a public forum, have said, if this man's farm hadn't come along, we'd be out of business. I won't call any names. They're friends and, and, and big competitors, too. But they've, uh, 
They always make me feel good when I see them because I know what they've said before. Well, Harlandale is history. About I pride, mean, well, and about pride of midnight. Well, pride of midnight, midnight sun, and all of them reflect back to the Harlandale farm and the history of the breed right. and the and the ability. But I do know the natural ability of the pride bloodline is one that every trainer seeks now. Right. Maintain a, a broodmare herd here of 50 plus, plus or minus. Raise about 35 colts a year. Uh, of our own. We breed some mares, uh, a lot of mares I guess, for the public and uh, it's several hundred each year. Uh, it varies from year to year but it's, it's several hundred and some of the horses, the stallions attract more mares than others and their attractiveness comes and goes depending on their age and the success of their offspring. And we try to breed our mares to a, a quality mixture of these horses. And then we're, in the succeeding generations, we're crossing those bloodlines. But right now we're expecting, I think, 36 folds next spring. That's great. Yeah, we had five this fall, which will supplement that. And uh, it, in the years past, we've had <clears throat> We've carried more mares than that, but we found that this is a <coughs> excuse me a number that we can <coughs> manage with the staff we can that uh, this place will support and still have a quality offering of yearlings to sell, and the yearling sales every year are our our revenue source. Mm -hmm. uh, the stallions are at best a break-even uh, situation. The stud fees hardly cover the expense of managing these horses. But uh, we pioneered, I would like to think, the, the yearling sales. I think we had our first yearling sale in 1958. And uh, for many years we had it here on the farm. It included our, our yearlings and yearlings brought here by people who had bred to the horses that we were standing here. And we had a limitation on that, which went from a one to two to three year, three day sale. And we went forward with that till uh, 1972. And then uh, Charlie Bobo offered his facilities for us to join his general consignment sale. And over the years, we became a major part of that sale. And the last few years that we were there, we were the active managers there. And uh, we did that until uh, the late 80s, I guess. But I've, I've come forward in a limited amount of time to where we are now, where we have out on parole, we have Jen's major general, I don't have, that's a picture of him up there, and I've got gold power. I've had dark spirits rebel and pride's dark spirit, and pride's genius, pride's gold coin. He was, he was raised here. He's the sire of gold power, and gold power was the sire of main power of this year's celebration winner. Well, on your brute, on your yearlings now. Mm -hmm. Now, how do you go about selling them? Do you still hold a sale down here? And <coughs> no, we. <coughs> We have uh, joined uh, what they call a yearling extravaganza, which has been sell, held successfully at Sand Creek and now at uh, Sale of Champions Ground next to the Celebration Ground. It's managed by Gerald Pettigo and, and uh, David Landry. And we've been a, a successful part of that for the last few years. And uh, over time, <clears throat> We found that it was hard for us to comprise a major part of a three-day sale and still be the managers of that sale. Right. And it, it, it worked out fine. We pay somebody else a commission now instead of trying to be the sale managers. We're, we're, we've been happy with this arrangement. And it gives you time to kind of kick back and enjoy yourself and, and see some other coats out there too, doesn't I it? I do. <laughs> you know, I'm... I'm following the Colt in every fifth one instead of looking at every other one or right. every one going in. So, right. 
<clears throat> it's a different environment and a happier time for me and uh, the folks that, that helped me. <clears throat> How many acres do y'all have here, Bill? We have, we have 201 acres here. I have, uh, my wife and I own another farm of about the same size in this county and we, we use the two of them uh, jointly and move stock from place to place depending on what their activity is at the time. Um, and it takes about 400 acres to support what I'm doing. Right. Uh, but we have, uh, the, this is our visible spot mm -hmm. in the place we're where the public identifies us. And uh, we have a, a high rate of acceptance here with the population in Franklin. They like to come out and see what we're doing. Take, get the good feel of being on a horse place. Well, this is a beautiful place out here. Well, there's one thing I want to ask you, though. Now, there's a lot of speculation about this. Most stud barns, they take their uh, horses and they have them to where they run in a paddock and all of this. But I read somewhere that when Midnight Sun was alive, that he never ran in a paddock, <coughs> that y'all worked him under saddle every day. That's exactly right. And... I really uh, don't know why he was managed that way, except a man that worked here at that time, Fred Laws, did not believe in turning a horse out. He came from a racetrack environment. Uh, he was with us until the last year that Midnight Sun was alive, and he didn't want him turned out. And, Fred made a very persuasive case that we shouldn't do that. So the horse accepted his environment. He had a nice big box stall here, big 14 square stall. And he did, he got his exercise. I was blessed with the opportunity when, as a young man to ride him and exercise him here and really was proud of that opportunity. You know, while I was exercising Midnight Sun, folks were watching me ride Midnight Sun. <laughs> right. And that was a great treat, you know. <laughs> folks would wave at me, and I, I think that's, that's, that's swell. Well, now you do a great job now showing Revelation. I, well, I know I watched you. He and I are getting old together, and so that's got to stop one of these days, but I do enjoy that horse. Well, he's a beautiful <clears> horse, I he, can tell you. He, he's just about all I can manage. And when he comes down that, down that, uh, runway into the celebration ground, I mean he swells up like a balloon and he hits that ring, he's on go. And I'm sitting up there wondering whether I can turn him around the next time I got to turn him around or not. Do you think he knows where he's at? Hey, he knows where he's, he knows he's in a show ring and he, he's putting it on. And we, he's, he's put out a few good ones. I haven't bred him as much as I should because I enjoy showing him. So. And Bill Bobo does a good job. Oh, it? Bill Bobo's a fantastic he, he job. Puts him, he puts him together for me. Bill Bobo is one of your top trainers, no matter which way you look at it. He is yeah, a fine person. He, he's a good man. I had him, David Landrum had him for a year or two for me, and he, he prepared him in a great way for me. So I'm always, in fact, I, have to, I think I encourage the celebration to put in an old folks class over there. I was showing in the 50 and over, in the 60 and over, and I kept being the oldest guy in so the just where I was. Up. And I said, give me another shot. And so they made it 70 and over. And my hope is There'll maybe be an 80 and over. 80. Oh, it would be great. Hey, I think it's fantastic. I love it. I love these different <laughs> hey, classes. There's a lot of guys in that class that are about, they, I may have been the oldest in there, but there's a lot of them creeping up there. Oh, yeah, but they, and, and it's look, just the fact that they have the classes for uh, everybody and, and everybody can could compete. And of course, the lady that won the class this year, she's a junior in that class. She just got in there this year for the first time to hit 70. And then, of course, she wiped everybody out. That's, and that's rookie's the, luck, right? That's the way this champion's <laughs> got there, you know. <laughs> Nicholas comes in there at age 50, and he wins everything for 10 years. And then there's another guy that turns 50. And, you know, this, this I don't know. It, it's a bad situation for old folks. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's great to just get in there. And oh, I love time. it. I love to compete. I, I look back at the times when Midnight Sun was around, and I showed some flat-shot horses at that time. My, one of my greatest thrills was winning the two-year-old class at Columbia. I think it was 1948, and a two-year-old horse by Midnight Sun. 
and that sucker lapped the ring twice while everybody else was trying to go around once. I, <laughs> everybody said he's going to break up. I didn't. This old ain't going to break up. <laughs> Just let him I never go. got to show him but once. Look, they were. No, the judge sidled up to somebody and said, "Don't leave here till I talk to you." He mm -hmm. wanted to buy. <laughs> Anyway, it was a, I enjoyed it all and still enjoy all this. I'm ready to, to take a tour of the barn. I want everybody to see just what a fantastic place this is and, and let them touch on some of this history too. Oh, I'd love to. Well, let's take, a, right. let's take a trip. All right, that's just a portion of it. That's right. We, we've, got, we've got some more and it, it just keeps getting better. He, uh, Bill Harlan was like, reading the book but the book telling you oh yeah so uh you do your thing then we'll get some more we'll be right back after these messages <laughs> Same bloodline, same mother, same father, and here he is. Now this is the offspring. Now Hero is standing at stud at Jerry Williams stable. Yes, now I'm gonna tell you that's a that's a real nice horse. That horse had an injury happen to him in the stall when he was young. Um, but now I tell you got all got a lot of talent that hero horse does. He's a real nice horse. Welcome to where the five to nine more than makes up for the nine to five. To where you check your troubles along with your coat. Days are made, even at 10 at night. Welcome to the best time you've ever had since the last time you were here. To old friends, new experiences, and forgotten cares. Welcome to where life moves at the speed of you. Welcome to Sam's Town Tunica Hotel and Gambling Hall by Boyd. Welcome to where you want to be. More of What a Horse coming up. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's Mr. Jerry Harris. Got some more stuff he wants to talk about the breeding. Hey, we, we got another clip of Bill Harlan, but I just, the history of this industry, especially the breeding. Yes. And you, you can go to Spencer Benedict's, uh, you can go out to Precious Memories, you can go to Sugar Creek, you can go to all of these and they, they've got the knowledge. Oh, yeah. But when you can get knowledge from the people that were here in this industry before a lot of us were even born. Yes, uh-huh. Because Bill Harlan was at the first meeting of the Breeders Association. Yeah. So that's how bad, how far back he goes. But it, it's just the, the information that you get from these people and, and you see what they've done and where they've been, then you say, God, man, it's just, uh, I'll tell you what, it, it makes you sit back and think about all the hard work that's done into this horse. And this is why we need, as an industry, need to keep working to keep that. Yeah, that's and right. I, for one, I'm, I will keep working, but towards that. But let's watch the rest of this interview. It's getting better. Bill, we're out here in the hallway of this magnificent old barn, and I know we've got Classic Generator over here, and we've got Jen's Major General over here, but right there is where I want to walk. Right. I want to go down here and, and get a look at, right. out on parole. He's one of the leading sires today. He's, he bred lots of mares, and he's doing a good job for us here, too. Well, I can tell you, I remember back in Celebration where when Benjamin Bowen went out and rode him. Yeah. And uh, he just looked like he was having a ball, and that little boy up on his back. That goes to show that the Tennessee walking horse, even a stallion, now here's a breeding stallion, breeds every week. Right. But a 10-year-old mm -hmm. young man can ride <clears throat> and make him look good. And you made Benjamin look good, didn't you, buddy? Yeah, he made Benjamin look good. And he's got some proud owners who really support this horse. Mr. and Ms. Baskin just couldn't be more supportive of a stallion. And we just were really proud to have this horse. Well, I know that he was, he was great out there. I know that several people rode him. Uh, maybe this year when he comes out, I'll get up there and take me a spin on him. Yeah, you need to do that. But it, we need to do that. I've, I've rode a few real good horses, but I think this one would probably be the greatest one I ever rode. Yeah, you go. <laughs> <laughs> he is great. I remember when they brought him back into fraternity a couple of years ago that, I mean, he stole the show. 
Yeah, I mean, he he looked good. Everybody was saying, bring him back again. We want some more of him because <laughs> he did look good. Now, yeah. We got some more stallions down here, too. Yeah, we need to check on. But he is he has done his job. Let me uh, let me open the door on, on the Major General. If you know, all right. I'm like I'm really proud of this horse. He's 20 years old. He's he's put out as many high class horses as anyone living today, and he's still a very popular horse in this breed. This is Jen's Major Major General, and he's got some supportive owners, which is part of the package you gotta have to have a successful stage. Now what's some of the horses that he has sired? Well, Jose is one that's a very popular horse out now. Jose, Jose? Yeah, and... Uh, MG above the rest? MG above the rest, and, oh yeah. Well, he is a pretty thing, and he's he's how old, Bill? He's 20. 20 years old. And he looks like a colt. Now he does that. Now he looks like he's awful young. And he's a prize generator horse. Well, he's a pretty thing. Got a nice head on him. Mm -hmm. I love the disposition of these walking horses, yeah. though. You're not going to find that in every breed. Just like you're not going to find a, every breed that you can take a world grand champion and a child can ride him. Right. Yeah. This is Gold Power. He's the sire of Main Power. And well, Ladies and gentlemen, Main Power is our current world grand champion. Right. Come here, buddy. And we're about to see his sire. Now. He's really, he's really a sweetheart. Back up, back up, don't walk out on top of me. And he's a good boy and got a lot of good coat. He was a sire of the yearling world grand champion this year. Power Force. Now how old is this one? He is 11. 11 years old? Yes, sir. And oh, he's, he's a pretty thing. He's a prize gold coin horse. So I've shown you a generator horse a horse with a little pusher blood in him, and now this gold coin horse. Now he is a pretty thing. He's the biggest horse I've got, too. Hey, how, how many hands does this one stand? He's, he's 16 plus barefoot. 16 plus. Barefoot. Okay. Oh, she's on. Uh, this now we've got sweepstakes. Very popular horse. And we've only had two years. We've, we're really pleased with the acceptance. Come here, buddy. We ain't this going nowhere. This is Sweepstakes. Uh, he has another supportive owner, which is part of the mix that you got to have. Well, he's a pretty thing. But he's a, another generator horse. And really coming on as, as people, people like his colts, and we get a lot of calls from this horse. Well, they're getting more and more. Uh, horses in the show ring now, especially the way the walking horse industry is growing. Mm -hmm. More people are getting into it. And the different classes, it opens up a whole new era for a lot of these horses. Right. Now, uh, we're here with uh, Coin Maker, right? Right, this is Coin Maker. He has won probably as many celebration blues as any stallion living. Now he's and a show pleasure. In the, he's won the sh he's shown both ways, but his championships recently have been the show pleasure division. And he's just so dominant. Everybody knows they're running for second when they go in. Well, he and is beautiful. We're standing this fall and, and uh, have, have some bookings lined up for him. We're looking forward to seeing his coach. But now he's a very personable horse. Oh, yeah. Yes. And he's a gold coin horse. And that, oh. that adds a, uh, that good personality side to him. He's a good size horse, too. Yes. But he's got a beautiful head on him. Yeah. Beautiful. Bill, the more you walk through here, these horses, they all of them, they just, they're just ready to walk up and be petted and oh, talked yeah. to. They'll come to you. They don't, uh... Come here, buddy. Now, right here is Revelation. Yeah. Now, here's one that you show. <laughs> We're going to have to show some more footage of you and him. Yeah, all right. All right. I, I hope you find some good footage. Ah, uh, he did good over in Murfreesboro. Yeah. Didn't you, buddy? Yeah, we... We've had two or three good shows in our lifetime. Now anyway, this is your horse, right? He, he belongs mm -hmm. to us, yes, sir. He belongs to us. He and Gold Power are the two that we own. And I know. That's something uh, we're agents for and proud to have him here. I know Bill is crazy about him. Yeah. 
And this tonight here is classic generator. And he, we don't want to miss any of them. We're going to no, talk to all no, of them. Once you tell, this horse has been a four-time celebration winner. He, he dominated the fine harness division for many years. And he's about as pretty. He's another. Well, of course, he's my generator. Yeah, we need to bring him on out so we can get him on camera a little bit. Come, come on, buddy. Step up here. Step up here. He's pretty headed yeah. horse. Yeah, Wide he away. is pretty. Gentle. Big mm. eyes. Yeah. Well, I've noticed just about every one of these horses that we've looked at today, Bill, all of them are just as friendly. Oh, yeah. You can tell there's a lot of love been given to these horses. Yeah. And that's, to me, that's what makes the Tennessee walking horse so great is they return that love tenfold. Right. Right. Sure do. Well, let's go out and look at you, your pastures. I'd like right. to see some land. All right. Bill, I know normally you, you have a lot of different coats and, and mares out here, of course, these up here, but how many mares did you say you normally keep? Uh, we keep about 50 plus. Uh, it, it varies some, but uh, I haven't counted them recently. I don't have, I'd say 55, something like that, of our own. And then we board a few for other people, especially during breeding season. And uh, I, I have some of them here now. The other farm, I've got some that'll fall next spring. Uh, there's a few mares over here that'll also fall next spring, and right. these are some we just weaned the colts off of. All right. And their babies are uh, in down by the river and in one direction and, and another. Well, you got over 200 acres here, so we don't expect them to be right no, up here I, at the fence. They're out I, doing something. I really didn't have them congregated right here <laughs> for you today. I've got a few mares with colts in the stables, and they're they're holding there until we can do some things to, uh, to their mamas today or see about their mamas today, see if they're in heat or something like that. But normally we'd have them out here in this side and uh, the, we like to cater to the, the people in Franklin who like to see mares with babies in the fields. Right. And uh, we like to have some fresh things for them to look at. I tell you, hey, that was amazing. Hey, I'm telling you, it, it just when, when you look at it. Now later on, we're going to uh, a little further in the year when we when we got a little break and we can do it. We're going to show one of Bill, uh, Mr. Brantley. Okay. Now he he and his wife sat to, with us one day and we went back through all those videos and pictures that I had taken while we were riding around. But now Jerry he. He showed me some places that you would not believe. It wasn't, it's not the same as when, when I went down and interviewed Bill Harlan, but this information, Tommy Hammontaler, mm -hmm. he, he went with us. It, and uh, we just talked about everything. The old barn out there that uh, he currently had, yeah. and then some of these others that uh, when we show it, you're going to see some video of saying they raised horses, horses in that <laughs> barn because I mean they covered up with with vines and, and old wooden barns, but it, it's uh, uh, it's kind of like some, some of the stuff we've done that that uh, pe people that, that this is that interview is over twenty years old. Yeah. So we went back a long way, but I guess that that's it for me. Next week, your buddy Mike Emery is going to be here, and he knows more about it than I do. Yes. So. Y'all have a good day. Working out hard every day to be the best I can. I shift it to the right, shift it to the left, hunger down low and reach high to the sky. Got my rhythm down pat, so they say. I'm looking like a winner in every way. So when I hear somebody say, What a horse! I know they're talking about me, of course, and I'm gonna be in that winner's circle someday. I'm a prime example of a Tennessee walker, a high-stepping, fast-walking Tennessee talker. I'm going to be in that winter circle someday. Ah, oh, please start talking.
Thank you.